Hi there, Silvari here. Kicking up the new year, welcome to the third episode about the analysis of the Kunar map by Fanzon0019. This episode will be special in a sense. Today I will dive into two parts in one video, called Water and Wood. But before we begin, I would love to thank you guys for 100 subs. It really means the world to me that you enjoy those also theory crafting videos. If you aren't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. Now enjoy the video. As a quick note for this part, in this part alone I will be using a different skin with orange circles where invisible circles are. It is done to distinguish the parts where the invisible circles are and where not. Would love to shout out Malai for the skin edit. It won't be big exaggeration if I will say that this part is mechanically the easiest to achieve a full combo on. The presence of a few hidden FCs and NSS can easily make you realize that. It combines the knowledge already gained from the previous parts, however with an evil twist on the end. Do you remember the invisible circles from the first episode of the series? Now it makes a comeback. The beginning of this part requires solely a memory about the placement of the invisible circles. In total there are 4 sets of them. If you have trouble navigating them, try to estimate the location of the circles with the help of either the slider or, if you use the follow points, these can be found helpful as well. The ending also introduces the invisible circles, however, as I mentioned earlier, has an evil twist to them. Location estimation is no longer a problem, because all circles are placed in the same place, but the rhythm complexity cranks up significantly in difficulty. This part starts with a bunch of sliders repeating into each other. They aren't a big problem since they end on the blue tick before the next slider starts. The real part starts right after these three sliders and the spam of spinners. These mostly utilize basic finger control and reading abilities. These are mapped as stacks so people unfamiliar with those might have trouble with them. However, once you get a grasp of what Rin is here, this shouldn't be a big problem. Especially that this part is one of the slowest in the entire song, oscillating around 177 ppm. Also, this pattern repeats itself twice. There is one catch though. Right before the last stacks, this rhythm doesn't go like that. It's like that. So either you have to cheese this as a triple here with a slight accuracy punishment, or do the quip snap within one fourth of a bit. Right after the stacks, I can say that the actual hard part of the map is starting. This map uses a lot of ways to abuse with easily breakable repeats on the left and right, like these patterns. Wish I could help here and explain a little bit more, however here is just playing a game. If you have trouble getting the rhythm, you can also check in the editor. This slider is one of the more interesting ones. The way this slider behaves, you'll probably think that in order to 300 this slider, you need to have your cursor near the end of that, which is placed here. Well, you couldn't be more wrong. Due to the high pitch on the very end of that slider, it returns to the beginning and comes back in about 40 to 50 milliseconds, making a slider leniency count in about this area. Accuracy on these three sliders is directly tied to your aspect ratio of your game. These sliders are so long that in various aspect ratios they may clip so much out of your game window, it is impossible to 300 them. What are those aspect ratios? Using only the ones which the game offers by default, these are most notably 4x3, 16x10, and 16x9. 
We also have other aspect ratios and the one I think are the most important here. I 5 by 3 and whatever this thing is. <laughs> To assess these, anything below 5x3, so 1280 by 768 makes you doomed to 100 every single one of them. At this aspect ratio, you can hit both tires on the right. So which aspect ratio can be used to assess the entire pattern then? None in fact. The reason I said about this weird aspect ratio is that to 300 the slider, after an extensive research, it literally misses it by 12 pixels in width, despite being the widest aspect ratio available. So we need to mess up around your CFG file and add the missing 12 pixels in width there. And it still was semi-consistent 300, so adding more will be more beneficial. This part probably requires the highest amount of rough skill into it, rather than purely theory crafting. As far as the first patterns are quite easy to understand and play, when the cut streams hit and you aren't skilled in them, your accuracy may take a hit. The only thing I want to say about this part is that this pattern is very often misread as 4 triples, however this one is continuous cut stream. Either you can mash it, or try to hit it properly, or treat it as faster triples. If you would try to hit them as faster triples, having in mind that you would click on the first circle as late as possible and last uh, as quickly as possible, you will end up with 254 BPM burst paired with the jumps at around 226 BPM. After this exhausting part, you have a quick few second break before the ending hits. So this starts with the triple, where every single circle is on the same tick. So okay, I'll just turn on the mouse keys on break and hit it. Right? Well, for some reason also doesn't allow you to click more than two keys at the same time. So we need to get a bit more creative here? Well, not really, we just need to theoretically hit this triple within the timing window. So to remind, OD is set to 08.9. It means that in both ways early and late, we have about 51 milliseconds to spare. In the end, we'll get the triple at roughly 580 BPM. Just, just mash it. <laughs> There's nothing much to say. It's easily accessible. It even has an SS on the leaderboard. Unfortunately here it isn't that easy as in water. Occasionally I would love to firstly speak about possible accuracy on this map. The basis for these calculations will be the auto playthrough, because it has a very similar outcome as humans could theoretically do. In total, humans can get rid of 5100s due to auto limitations and due to the so-called spaghetti code. However, in return we lose one or two because spaghetti code sometimes hits this slider and sometimes it doesn't. So, 464 300s and 21 100s are possible for a grand total of 97.11%. You may be wondering why I blurred the combo on the screenshot. Well, because of this. The slider is hittable, GN even proved it's possible, but for some reason Auto has a tough time hitting it. So after it, we have to add 53 combos at the end, and one bonus, the one on which the Auto broke. To the total, we should also add the net gain of 4 slider and gained over Auto, as shown in the accuracy part, to the grand total of 644 max combo. 644 max combo and 97.11%. The A ranks on this map, especially on normal raid, are already insane. It utilizes a lot of techniques known about 2B mapping and funky patterns in general. However, this map right now will have a race for the first S rank. Who will do this? Only time will tell. Thank you for watching. If you want to be up to date with the new uploads, hit that subscribe button. All the links to people who helped me with this video will be in the description. See ya!